Today is Thursday, July 28th. I'm Maureen Kyle with your 3 News Now morning update. Thanks for spending a few minutes with me on the WKYC YouTube page. And we start with Peyton Domsky for a check of today's forecast. How's it looking, Peyton? You know, it's not looking too shabby across Northeast Ohio when it comes to your Thursday seasonable conditions. And a brief shower or two is expected not only for the first half of today, but also eyeballing the second half of the day really late tonight and potentially overnight. Now, tomorrow we start class and we work in some extra sunshine. And if you haven't made your weekend plans yet and they don't involve the outdoors, go ahead and make them right now because the weekend is looking absolutely ideal. 70s on tap this morning across Northeast Ohio and our dew points are not far off. And so the closer the two are together, the more moisture it feels like that we have in the atmosphere or as you step out the door. It is definitely muggy, folks. It'll be with us almost all day long. And with some lights, even calmer winds in place, we've also had some patchy, dense fog too. So low to mid 80s expected across Northeast Ohio today. That's right where we should be for this time of the year. As I mentioned, a brief shower or two, and it's all associated with two fronts. We've got one working its way through the Buckeyes Day right now, and then one off to the north and west, kind of posing some unsettled weather for the Chicagoland area, working its way into Michigan and then northern Indiana. This number one front is going to cause potentially that brief shower or two during the first half of today. And we only have a sprinkle or two down near parts of Tuscarawas County at the moment and not too far off just north of Erie County as well. But as we start the morning. We've been mostly dry in your national time right hour our forecast. We keep the clouds with us and then we start to break away. That's because that one front is going to tug away from us, take some of that cloud cover with it, and then that's when full sunshine has the chance to peek on out and that happens during the middle of the day. So right around any lunch plans you might have in place and then during the second half of the day, we see the increase in some clouds and then the chance for some wet weather to move on through. This is all going to happen late tonight, very early tomorrow morning. Nothing that's going to ruin your commute into work tomorrow morning, but maybe Maybe the occasional windshield wipe, but the change here is going to be where our temperatures go and how it feels outside. So in your union home mortgage extended forecast, mid 80s today, lower 80s tomorrow. We stay in the low 80s for Saturday. High pressure takes over, which means for you, blue skies, the sunshine, an absolutely gorgeous setup as we head toward the weekend and wrap up the work week, Maureen. All right, Peyton, thank you so much. Well, let's start in Perry Township. Three workers were sent to the hospital Tuesday night after an explosion at the Timken Steel Faircrest plant. One of the steel workers, 33-year-old Joey Farrell, is still in critical condition this morning. His family tells us he reserved, received burns over 75% of his body. The incident is just the latest in a series of safety problems at the company. Just last month, OSHA fined the company more than 315000 for a 2021 incident that killed a worker. Tuesday's explosion came when dripping water landing on the furnace triggered the explosion. The blast sprayed molten steel, which can reach temperatures close to 3,000 degrees. Meanwhile, Timken Steel released a statement on the latest incident saying in part, quote, the safety and well-being of our employees is a top priority and we are continuing to investigate the cause of the incident. This current incident is under investigation. Here are three updates now on cases that we're watching closely in court. First, a grand jury has indicted the men who are facing charges connected to the beating death of Akron teen Ethan Liming. 19-year-old Tyler Stafford, 20-year-old Deshaun Stafford Jr., and 21-year-old Donovan Jones are all charged in the death of 17-year-old Liming. Police say the beating happened last month after Liming and his friends shot water pellets at several men playing basketball. The family of an Akron teen who drowned during an event with one of the city's high school football teams has hired an attorney to investigate his death. 14-year-old Touche Pope, an incoming freshman at Akron Early College High School, died last week in Melanie Lake. Pope's parents say they were never informed of the team's plans to visit the lake until they received a phone call from police to rush to the hospital. Police are continuing to investigate as well. And the trial for Tamara McCloyd will begin its fourth day this morning. McCloyd is charged in the New Year's Eve murder of Cleveland police officer Shane Bartek. Yesterday, the Trace Evidence Unit took the stand discussing how evidence is processed. In politics, a few months ago, we told you about the Bryson Gray and Ben Price COVID-19 Neurological Impact Act, partially named after St. Ed's student Bryson Gray, who took his own life last year. We've learned the bill passed in the House this week. 
It seeks to fund research to better understand how COVID-19 can affect the brain as Bryson's family believes it changed him neurologically. Next Saturday, Bryson's family is also hosting a memorial golf outing to benefit his foundation that raises money for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. We have a link to that on WKYC.com. The bill now moves to the Senate for consideration. A 10 year old boy is recovering after a bullet came flying through his window early Wednesday morning while he was sleeping in his bed. Euclid police responded to a call just after 5 a.m. yesterday to East 195th Street, where they found a house just shot up. The 10 year old boy was upstairs sleeping when he was hit. Police say it's unclear if he was struck by a bullet or shrapnel. We found a large amount of shell casings outside a particular house. Uh, a house had been shot up uh, over a dozen times. Investigating and so far they have no suspects yet and no one is in custody. Michael Amiot, the Euclid police officer accused of using excessive force during a traffic stop, took the stand in his trial yesterday. Amiot described what happened in the moments after he pulled over motorist Richard Hubbard III and the violence that followed. Neil Fisher explains what's next in that case. Euclid police officer Michael Amiot took the stand and spoke directly to the jury as he described the 2017 traffic stop. I'm approaching it like a normal traffic stop at this point. During cross-examination, Amiot testified that Richard Hubbard had complied leading up to him getting out of the car. Isn't it true that Richard Hubbard did nothing to, nothing but comply when you said get out of the car? Is that true or false? When I asked him to get out of the car, he started stepping out of the car. Then a struggle began, leaving Amiot to throw several punches at Hubbard. Initially, when we go down to the ground, well, he was wrestling with us, and he does throw a punch at me. Um, that was just shown. But if he's wrestling with us, we use strikes. Amiot justified his punches after he reviewed a force continuum chart in court, which shows what force officers can use when a threat exists. But the prosecution questioned that use of force. During the three flurries of punches that you threw, did he swing back at you one time? While I was throwing the punches, no. That was Neil Fisher reporting, and the jury has heard from nine witnesses over the three days of testimony. The trial picks back up this morning. It's expected the defense will send more people to the stand. The judge hopes to have everything wrapped up by the end of the day tomorrow. We're getting a better look at the ongoing construction on the new Sherwin-Williams headquarters in Cleveland. The building will be 36 floors of office space, housing more than 3,500 employees. Over the next several years, Sherwin-Williams says at least $600 million will be spent on the project, with the plan to have employees working in the new headquarters by the end of 2024. And it's the moment foliage fans from all over have been waiting for. The Cleveland Metro Park Zoo's corpse flower is blooming. The corpse flower has bloomed just four other times over the last 28 years. The last time was 2019. The zoo tells us that the bloom started yesterday afternoon around 530. And in case you don't want to make the trip to see the stinky flower, the zoo has a live stream running on their YouTube page. The bloom lasts for roughly 24 to 48 hours. And today, Top Golf is hosting a live stadium tour at First Energy. Guests can tee off from the dog pound, play an interactive game, even have a little something to eat in the cardiac club. And don't worry, you do not have to be a skilled golfer to enjoy. The event starts today and runs through July 31st. We have info up on our website, WKYC.com. Thank you for taking time to join me for this 3 News Now morning update. Our digital team will continue to bring you the stories making headlines around Northeast Ohio and the world. Make sure you continue to check our social media pages and WKYC.com throughout the day. I'm Maureen Kyle and the GO team. We'll see you tomorrow morning on GO starting at 4.30 a.m. Have a great day.